All right, everybody, we'll continue now with the Ole Miss defensive group. And obviously, we've got defensive coordinator Pete Golding, safety John Saunders, and linebacker Jeremiah John Baptiste. How'd I do on the pronunciation? Is that good? Great. All right, man. All right, off to a good start. Uh, all right, Coach, we'll start with you. Just give us an opening statement on, on getting to Atlanta, getting settled in, and how bowl preparations have gone so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, we're very excited to be here. Uh, very prestigious bowl. Uh, we appreciate, number one, the city of Atlanta. Uh, obviously, Chick-fil-A, the Peach Bowl Committee. Uh, the Omni's doing an unbelievable job making us feel at home. So, uh, really exciting opportunity for our kids. Uh, I thought they, uh, they played their butt off all year. Uh, to have the opportunity to compete in the New Year's Six Bowl, uh, more importantly, to have the opportunity to win 11 games uh, for the first time in the history of the program, I think shows uh, you know what they've done this year, the legacy that they create uh, moving forward uh, and set a new standard. So. Uh, they've been working extremely hard. Uh, practices have been going well. Uh, the transition from Oxford to Atlanta was very smooth. Uh, Coach Kiff's done a great job. So uh, we're excited for the opportunity to play a really elite uh, Penn State team. Uh, that thing's very balanced. Coached very well. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for our kids uh, in front of a big crowd uh, and a great bowl. All right. Thanks, Coach. John, um, you guys have taken a commanding 2-0 lead in the battle for bowl week. Uh, so congratulations. We, Thanks, there, there is a stat. I think the team that, that wins bet the Battle for Bowl, it goes on to win the game like 90% of the time. So no pressure or anything. But talk about that and, and your experiences. What, you know, what have you enjoyed about the competitions? Oh, man, that's been amazing. Uh, this is my first New Year's Six Bowl, so really it's just been like eye-opening. I've never did anything like this. So yesterday, like go-karting and stuff, oh, man, that was amazing. Like seeing all the guys rolling around, man, it was so fun. Everybody enjoyed themselves. We were bowling. And then like the first night putting, as soon as we got in, it was just – like jump straight to it and just start competing. So that was fun too, watching the guys uh, and secure those wins. That was great. Yeah, Jeremiah, what about you? What have you enjoyed so far? Uh, I'll definitely say I enjoyed Andretti last night, just being able to uh, bond with my teammates. We bonded all year, but just being able to bowl and watch them go kart and <laughs> see some of them crash was pretty funny last night. So I, I've been having a lot of fun. Good deal. All right, guys. All right, we'll go into questions. Raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone. All right, let's start off right here. Third row on the left, please. Pete obviously loss of Cedric choosing to, to kind of focus on his next next step in, in his career but, but you know keeping a, the bulk of this defense for, for the Peach Bowl and not a lot of opt-outs or any really major injuries just what does it speak to the mentality of that side of the ball that y'all have created this year yeah I, I think number one I think it starts up top and, and I think it's the culture that, that coach Kiffin created and, and I think uh, we've got a really good group of kids that that love football uh, I think a big part of it now is how much do you love football uh, I think there's some guys that play football for what football can do for them, and then there's other guys that play football that love football. And I think the only way you get better at football is to play football. And so I think these extra 15 practices uh, that they bought into, I think all of them have looked at they can increase their value by playing another game and playing well, uh, whether that's being draft eligible and increasing their value, whether that's being a younger player and playing at their best when their best is needed in a big bowl game. And to go and be able to add into that, you know, into the offseason, I think it speaks values about the character of the guys in that room. And I think we got a lot of guys that love football, that love each other, uh, that want to compete. And I think, you know, we talked about in the summer of creating a legacy and what that was the legacy of this team going to be. And I think having the opportunity to win 11 games for the first time in the history of the program speaks volumes for a lot of guys that are in a locker room for the first time. And they came together and gelled together, and that's credit to Coach Kiffin and, and the guys in the locker room. So I think it speaks volumes of their character and their competitiveness, to be honest with you. All right, we'll go fourth row here on the left. Pete, I know it's a, a little bit down the line, but you guys have gotten a lot of big-time uh, commits in the transfer portal, uh, a, a really big-time recruiting class uh, as well. Uh, I guess what is, what is your philosophy when it comes to balancing high-level transfers and, and traditional high school recruiting in, in team building? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's we're in a unique time in college football, to be honest with you. And I think, uh, you know, now it's it's more as building teams than programs. I don't take that the wrong way, it's just because the transition happens so fast. And, you know, developmental players that you used to take, they'd be able to add bulk and size and strength. Some of those guys, depending upon their mental makeup, you're not going to have a chance to develop because they're not going to come in as play as true freshmen. And depending upon who's in their circle, December hits and the portal opens, then they might seek other opportunities. And you've invested six to 10 months, depending upon if they were mid-semester or summer, that you're not going to get back there, they're not going to get back. And so I think it's recruiting the right type of kid, regardless whether it's a transfer kid or a high school kid, 
that goes back to loving football. Uh, I think there's got to be a connect of why they want to be at Ole Miss, why they want to play for Coach Kiffin, uh, why they want to play in a scheme that's been successful and being around coaches that have been around guys that produce guys to get to the next level. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, but I think, you know, whether you're high school recruiting or portal recruiting, the number one thing is, is it a good fit? And I think, you know, Ole Miss isn't for everybody. And I think they come in and they see our guys. I think our current players do a really good job on official visits of being honest, you know, and telling them what it's really like. And I think there's no smoke and mirrors to where, hey, you're getting told one thing when you get there, something different. I appreciate that much about Coach Kiff and very honest and upfront. Uh, we got a great group of guys, great character that are really good football players that I think a lot of people want to be a part of right now. All right, and we, just as a reminder, we do have a few of the Ole Miss players that are out in the breakout room if you guys want to go grab them, but they will be in here next, okay? All right, over here, row two on the left. Pete, obviously this uh, Penn State offense right here, this uh, Penn State offense has done a good job taking care of the football and just kind of being physical on the line of scrimmage. Just, you know, when looking at this team on your own film, what's the biggest thing that pops off and uh, in what ways do they compare to some of the other teams that you've prepared for on your schedule through 12 games? Yeah, I think they do a great job of being balanced. Uh, I think they stay on course. Uh, I think the quarterback does a really good job of managing the game. Uh, I think that Franklin system of uh, being able to get in and out of certain plays based on the looks that they're getting, they do a really good job of. Um, obviously, 15, the quarterback, I mean, he's 80% on level one throws, um, you know, and to throw for whatever it was, 2,400 yards with one interception is pretty strong. Uh, so he's very smart. I think a big part of that is the system. Uh, they're going to make you try to show your hand and kind of know what you're in and, and dictate the run game and the pass game. And then I think they're very, they're very solid up front. I think they're very well coached. They're physical. They do a nice job in the run game. They're very complimentary based on the fronts and the pressures that you show. Uh, I think they got two tight ends that are really good players. Uh, they can create extra gaps and they kind of work to isolate, you know, from a pass standpoint, some mismatches on some backers. And then I still think they got, you know, the play action game that they've been successful at when they want to take shots. Uh, so very sound, very well coached. Uh, so it'd be a big challenge. All right, let's go right here on the right side. Pete, twofold question, if you don't mind. Uh, one, you, when you got here to Oxford in January, you guys brought in so many transfer guys, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Going into the season, what were your expectations for the defense? And then the second question is, just what were the main differences work, going from working for Coach Saban to working for Lane? Yeah, I mean, I think the first one was, you know, I mean, for our players, you know, we got, we got a spot the ball mindset on defense. And, you know, we don't care if it's practice, the playoffs, or the playground. Like, spot the ball, we're going to play. And I think when you have new guys and you're coming into a new year, it's about competing and about getting better every day. Uh, I don't think at that point, like, hey, our goal wasn't to win 11 games. We weren't focused on the outcome. It was like, hey, how can we take day by day to learn the system a little better, to learn each other better, to practice harder, prepare harder in order to play better football? And I think those start stacking and they start adding up. And you got guys practicing extremely hard, playing hard. I mean, we probably rotate 28 guys in any given game on defense which shows the depth that we have on that side of the football. Uh, and it's neat to see the buy-in. And you want guys, to, for other guys to play well. And they start pulling for them. They start coaching them in meetings and all those. So to see the development of that piece, you know, that I think correlates to winning and losing, instead of focusing on the outcome, focusing on working your butt off and doing little things right. And I think, obviously, you know, towards the end of the year, we played our best football because those things started to stack up. Um, but I think, you know, the credit goes to the players. I think they bought in. Um, it's a really good group. And they played extremely hard. And there's some games that we probably want back. But, you know, they did some really good things to put ourselves in this position. The second part of the question, you know, I, I think it's very similar from a football standpoint. You know, I think, obviously, Coach Kiff, you know, the things, you know, when, when you're with Coach Saban for so long, both of us, you try to take the things, all right, you know, you're successful because of this, right? And in some places, you're successful in spite of certain things. And I think he's done a really good job of the discipline of the program, the football-specific things that help you win championships, but putting his own personality on it. And I don't think you have to take the blueprint from A and bring it to B. I don't think it always fits. And so I think he's done an extremely good job of still being himself, but still taking a lot of really good things that both of us learned from Coach Saban, implementing the same things that he already knew and he learned from other guys. But I think number one is being himself. All right, over here, fourth row on the left. Pete, I, over here. I, obviously, uh, a lot of discussion about what you've done in the transfer portal. Um, what, what did you set out to achieve, you know, in that regard at the end of the regular season? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think you look at it like, hey, we're going to do everything in the portal. I think you look at it as like, all right, what are your needs? Uh, I think that's ever-changing now. 
right? It used to be you knew, hey, who were seniors, who were draft eligible guys, right? That you had to replace certain number per position. You had initials where that's over, you know? So I think your pool is bigger than it's ever been because you just don't know who you're going to have and who you're not going to have. But I, I think your program starts to recruit itself. And number one, I think winning football games is big. You know, I think now the platform that you have on social media and all that, I think Coach Kiff does a really good job of. And all these guys can increase their brand by playing under Coach Kiffin and playing for Ole Miss, which I think is big. But I think more importantly than all that, I think you have guys like these two guys sitting up here. It's their first season, their New Year's Six Bowl game, not a press conference, and it's two transfers, it's the first season. So the opportunity to go somewhere, to be able to compete immediately, you know, to be productive where you're at, to be able to produce, to increase your value. I think once guys see guys doing that and making an immediate impact, they want part of that. And there's a lot of programs that take transfers that they go in and they get lost, and they're not taking them to be stars. They're taking them for the bottom half of their roster because that's who they're losing. And so I think it's more of these guys selling it by how they play, how quick they've learned the system. Uh, I think Coach Kiff has really helped me on that to simplify the defense because it's kind of like more – pro right now to where you're taking guys off the streets and they got to get ready to play. And so that three to four year system where you had a lot of places and you got guys in there multiple years, it's not the same. So you can't expect a guy to come in the summer like some of these guys and, you know, get that system down before game one, September 1st. So uh, simplifying things and allowing guys to play, find what they do well, package that and ask them to do that. And then it's for them to have the success they've had. So uh, I think it's more on the players than us, to be honest with you. All right, next coat right here on the front row on the right. Yeah, this question is for John and for Jeremiah. Um, obviously, throughout the season, ebbs and flows, highs and lows. So I just wanted to ask both of you, was there anyone on the team that you maybe leaned on throughout that time to you know, kind of keep your mind focused or maybe even someone else on a different team across the country? Uh, obviously, you know, we're a team, we're a brotherhood. So whenever times did get hard during the season, we just went to one another and uh, found ways for us to improve ourselves and be better the next week. Yeah, for me, um... I lean mostly on like safeties because that's where I'm with the most of the day. So like safeties and corners, we just we got a tight bond, you know. We got like a group chat and stuff. So if anything like is a little rocky, like we know that we can lean on each other and just call on one another, and just they'll always be there for us. All right, we'll go next uh, front row on the left. Hi, right, thanks for the time, uh, Joe Smeltzer, Nindy Sports Now. Uh, so for all three of you, um, Pete, you talked about uh, Penn State's offense as a whole, but specifically the two running backs, Nicholas Singleton, number 10, Catron Allen, number 13. What have you seen from those guys that have stuck out? Because they've been playing at a high level pretty much since the day they set foot on campus. So, Yeah, I mean, I, I think number one, I think any good running back will tell you, you know, the, the five guys for them, the six or seven guys based on the personnel group and they're in, uh, help that. But I think both of them run with really good balance and body control. Uh, I think they have really good contact balance, uh, constant leg drive. I think they're hard to break down. Uh, I also think, you know, they really understand schematically what they're trying to do. I think they have really good patience on uh, letting blocks set up. Uh, I think they do a good job of reading the second level and knowing when to cut back and knowing when to press certain things. So, I mean, you can tell they're very well coached. Uh, they're very veteran in what they do, um, and they're really good players. So it's going to be a very, very big challenge. John, how about you next? Uh, yeah, watching the running backs, they're good backs. They uh, run hard, so we just got to make sure every play to hit, wrap, and run and just drive them back, you know, and just gang tackle as a team. Like everybody, uh, 11 hats to the ball every play, you know, just to make sure to polish off the ball carrier every play. Piggybacking off, John, uh, as they said, they do run hard, but we got guys too, so we're going to come hit you too. All right, row three on the left. For John and Jeremiah, Pete alluded to it. You know, this is not even y'all's – you know, even your full year with this team from when y'all, you know, transferred in. How would you sum up y'all's season, uh, you know, with your game and with a whole new defense and just trying to adapt to, to all the newness that you've had to so quickly? I'd say my experience here adapting to the defense, man, breathtaking. A great experience here. I love it here. I love Ole Miss with my whole heart. Um, life changing. I love it here. Yeah, honestly, just um, I'm just thankful and grateful, like, to have this opportunity because, like, just coming from, like, a smaller conference and then coming to the best conference in, like, American football is just – it's really amazing. So I'm really just appreciative and just trying to make sure to just keep soaking up as much knowledge as I can and just keep getting better day in and day out, honestly. All right, let's go second row right here on the left. 
Pete, I asked you during the preseason just about recruiting in the state of Mississippi and just kind of what separates those Mississippi recruits apart as far as their mentality. And when you look at the 2024 signing class, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, is it safe to say they have that common denominator in them all? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, th I think they love football. I think they're tough. I think they're competitive. Uh, I think they got a little chip on their shoulder. Um, and I think, you know, this class set by the guys on this team, I think they can see it, that they can do something special here. And, and I think when you get a lot of good players that are good people, and you get them on the same team, and you got the same common goal, and you got the right guy from the top. And I think, you know, there's certain places that are aligned correctly, in my opinion, from the chancellor to the athletic director to the head coach. Uh, when that's aligned and you get good players, special things happen. And I think they're all seeing that. And I think that's a testament to our team this year, you know, making those guys see that. I think to our staff from a recruiting standpoint, uh, number one, you know, identifying the right guys, evaluating them correctly, making sure they're the right type of kids. And for them, to take a step in, the, you know, in faith, to be honest with you. And it's like, hey, we're, we're, we, we can win a national championship at Ole Miss, you know. And I think Coach Kiff has set the precedent, like the best players in Mississippi are going to stay and, and play at Ole Miss. So I think that was the emphasis, and I think for the most part we got that done. All right, over here, uh, row four on the left. Pete, how do you see Centarian Perkins' positional future playing out you know it seemed like you used him mostly a certain way this year I'm curious if that's going to evolve or not yeah I think he's a very versatile player and I think uh you know obviously this year um as late as we got him in I think you got to simplify it and you know he's such a good player that you got to have him on the field and so you try to find certain situations certain packages to put him in to simplify it and let him be able to react instead of have to think uh, obviously his body type is very multiple to be able to play multiple spots uh, I think he has flexibility in the position. I think with a spring and another summer, obviously you'll see him at different spots. But, um, you know, being that athletic, he's very versatile. You know, he'll give us the ability to play him at multiple spots. And I think with a spring and a summer, I think you'll see that. Okay, right next door. This one's for, for John and Jeremiah. Was there a moment or a game or, or a point in the season where you felt like it all started to click for the defense? Uh, I'd say... I'd say it basically began in, um, in fall camp, really. Once uh, fall camp practice, we realized how good it would be, and we just uh, took that opportunity and just ran with it and knew that we would be a damn good defense this year. Yeah, honestly, in fall camp, just going against our offense every day, that just was, like, like really eye-opening for us. Like, the battles we're having every day at practice, you know, like for a month straight, it just got us so much better and just prepared us for this regular season. All right, anything more for this group? All right, take the last one right here in the front. All right, so this question's for all three of you. I have to ask, because I asked your teammates as well and coaches as well, does sugar go in grits? <laughs> yes. It no, does. it doesn't. Uh, Why doesn't it go in grits? Cheese grits. Cheese grits. John, you have thoughts? No, nah, sugar goes in plain grits for sure. Yeah, it does. sugar and butter. Coach, what about you? I'll eat them both ways. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Got some awesome. grit connoisseurs up here. I see. That's, that's, I'm like, oh, okay. All right.